I've got a few thousand aboard feet here of spruce. Some of them are big. Some of them, most of them actually are 16 feet. There's a few 10 footers and a few 12 footers in this pile. But I have these beautiful hardwood logs too. That's fine. That's not a beautiful hardwood log. That's the end of a log that I ended up um, not needing. But this is a perfectly cylindrical piece of white oak that I'm just in love with. But, uh, it's just at the borderline. That's about a thousand pounds thereabouts. So it's a little too much for our, our little tracker. And then I have this big behemoth right here, which is about 2,000 pounds, which I can't lift. And the other end of the log is in there. Yeah, I may have shown this on another video, but that's another piece of white oak. That's, uh, that's the stump to this fellow right here. And I've got to figure a way to get those on the mill. So with a little bit of welding and a little bit of metal, uh, and some looking at other people's ideas online. I came up with a, a way to load some of these heavier logs. I'm gonna show you something which certainly isn't gonna showcase the strength of this machine. So don't feel like the log I'm gonna show you that's on this loader is the limit for my tractor by any stretch of the imagination. It's just the next log that's in the queue that I need to get a couple of two by fours out of. So follow me and I'll show you what we're up to. And as you can see, the tractor that we have is, is easily able to lift this few hundred pound log. But I made these two ramps. So I made these two ramps and these two ramps have got a, a pivot on them. And these pivots right here fit into these pockets that I've made. And I can already see a glaring deficiency. I need to have another pocket over here so that if I have a 16 foot log, this end of that log is supported a little better, but that will be seconds to, uh, to build. So I take a, my winch cable, I run it around the top of the log so that as the winch pulls, I think I'm in the wrong way. No, nope, I'm in the right way. So as my winch pulls on that log, I'm going to roll it up. So I'll invite my camera operator to come around the back of the mill here and uh, we can see how this is all going to work. So I made this, this piece here and that fits into a two inch receiver which is welded solid from this frame rail to the center cross members and to the other frame rail so that it can't twist the frame if it's pulling on something heavier. I did put a wing bolt on the top and all that's for is just to take some of the slop out of that. And also to this, another wing bolt there. This winch is a, a utility winch that I use on my, it's a 4,000 pound winch I use on my ATV or the back of my tractor. And it's just got a simple, once again, a two inch receiver. And I have it hooked up with a wireless remote and a simple uh, deep cycle battery in an ammo box. This charges off of a little plug that I plug into my tractor and it will uh, charge this battery back up. So it's good for quite a few of these logs to, uh, to pull up, I would hope. So before we start pulling this up, I got a couple of things to do. One is I got to straighten my cable out so that it pulls up uh, even. We turn this on, I can take the slack out of this cable and it'll start rolling that log up and you'll see here in a second. Hope you can hear me over the wind. And that'll start rolling that log up. And like I said before, this is not showcasing the strength of this uh, piece of equipment at all. This is just the next log that's in the queue. So I'll move my cable close to the center of that log. Bouncing like that because the battery is dead in my cordless remote. And if I get close enough to that box so you can see the old it'll look a lot better. So 
So we're just about to the tipping point now. I made these ramps high enough so that the log, when it does fall on there, it's not going to roll back off. I have to make sure, of course, my backstops um, are up or else that log's just going to go right into this lab pile. And with a mighty crash, this will fall. And that's just that easy, how to load a log. And I don't think it would make any difference how heavy the log is. It's going to lift up, uh, lift it up. The downside of this, of course, is that I have to dis disassemble, disengage this whole business, take it all off in order to mill. And like I say, this log here would make no difference whatsoever. I could lift this up uh, by hand. I wouldn't even need the tractor to do this job, but I wanted to show you how that works. So let's get rid of this and how easy this is to take off. So I have a quick connect on this as well. So there, this battery pack, I'll put this back on the tractor so it'll charge up. And the winch comes out like this. Put the pin, pin should stay with one of these. There's a freezing rain warning in effect, so I want to be able to make sure I pick up all my toys before that happens. So the bolt that I have that tightens that up, just loosen that up and slide that out and you can see it goes in there plenty far. It's not going to bend anything, that's for sure. And then we disengage our ramps, carry them off to the side. This is all 3 16 wall square tube or rectangle tube. You can see how robust it is. I'm never going to bend it with any of the logs that grow in the province of Nova Scotia, that's for sure. And uh, it's the same exact material that I've built the rest of the mill out of, so I have lots of it laying around. And I made this hinge so that when the log gets to the top of this, if it has to lift it up, it will. And it's not going to bend anything at the, at the frame. <coughs> Which would be a bad day. So that's all I have to say about that. A simple way to load the logs on the mill that are way stronger than, than I am. And uh, it will definitely take the load off my little tractor. So anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, over and out.